Hi everyone. In this session, what I would like to do is dissect your first year law student's examination or baby bar exam score report. And what I'm going to do is focus on the November 2020 baby bar exam, since that was the most recent bar exam. But you can use this even if you took a different bar exam, because the numbers stay relatively consistent. They might change the scale a little bit, but overall you're going to be aiming for similar scores um, each administration. So keep in mind first that we're going to assume you failed the baby bar exam. And if you did fail the baby bar exam, remember that you are not alone. I know that it can be so devastating and discouraging, and it can feel like you put in so much work and effort and you don't even know what to do differently to pass. Um, we're very familiar with that because a lot of people come to us after they fail the bar exam looking for help. And the fact is a lot of people fail, okay? The baby bar exam has like a 20% pass rate, which is very low, and sometimes it's even lower than that. So you are definitely not alone, and you're with a lot of other applicants that also put in a lot of hard work and time and energy and still found themselves with unsuccessful results. The good news is you can definitely do it, you can definitely pass. What you wanna do is just change your approach so that you're maximizing your strengths and that you're improving your weaknesses all at the same time. And we help a lot of students do this through private tutoring and other um, things that we offer. So keep in mind, it's extremely possible. We've helped people at every stage, whether it's their first time taking the bar exam or the 10th time taking the bar exam, and they've passed the bar exam. So don't be discouraged, even though I know it's easy to be. The fact that you're even watching this video tells me that you care about your score report and you're looking for areas to improve. So let's talk about what your score report means. You'll get a letter that says something like this, and it'll tell you your overall results. And if you failed, it'll, tell, it'll say in the beginning that the committee regrets to inform you that you were unsuccessful. And then, then it will list your scores for both the multiple choice portion of the baby bar and the written portion of the baby bar. So for the multiple choice portion of the bar exam, you have contracts, criminal law, and torts. The maximum score that you'll see on any one of these is 34, okay, because these subjects are divided equally on the baby bar. A passing score is about 24. And that might change a little bit based on the administration, and I think it's actually at 23.8, uh, but we round it up here. Basically, it might not be exact, okay? So it's possible you get all 24s and you don't still technically pass, but that's the general score that you're gonna wanna aim for every administration, even though you will see a little bit of variation. And then your essay score is um, going to be out of 100, and a passing will be about 70. And again, it varies every administration. Um, so what you want to do is look at the essay subjects and see what you did well on and what you struggled with. So on the November 2020 baby bar exam, we had criminal laws, essay one, and then contracts as essay two, essay three was torts, and essay four was contracts again. In my opinion, essay two was probably the hardest question on this exam. Um, so keep that in mind, but it'll help you kind of gauge what your weaker subjects are or what your weaker areas of law are. Now, one suggestion I have is that if you've taken the baby bar exam more than once, look at all of your score reports at once, because oftentimes you can find patterns. And let me just give you an example. Sometimes someone will take a baby bar exam and they'll do really poorly in contract law on one exam. But on the next exam, they do great in contract law. And it doesn't necessarily mean they learn contract law better. It just is kind of a fluke. You know, sometimes you'll know the questions you're asked, sometimes you won't. So it's better if you have multiple score reports that you can compare across administrations and say, okay, I've always struggled in contracts, or I've always struggled in torts, and I've always done great at crim law, or whatever. And that can kind of help you gauge how well you know the subject matter. It's not a perfect indicator, but it is a pretty good indicator. And the more score reports you have, it, the advantage is, in this case, you can actually get a pretty good idea of what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. Okay, next you want to look at your total raw multiple choice and your total raw written score. Um, overall, your total raw multiple choice could be a maximum of 100. I mean, that would be great if you got anywhere close to 100. A passing is going to be approximately 70 on every administration. For the November 2020 baby bar exam, a 72.71 would have been passing. So it was a little higher than average. For the total raw written score, the maximum will be 400 because you could get a maximum of 100 points on each essay. Approximately 280 would be passing. For the November 2020 baby bar exam, a 268.46 would have been passing. So you could have scored a little bit lower than a 280 and technically passed the written portion of the exam. 
Now, does it matter what a passing score is for the multiple choice or for the essay portion? No, it really doesn't matter what a passing score is because all you need is that 560 total. So you could have scored higher on the multiple choice and lower on the essay and still passed the baby bar exam. But how this helps you is it tells you what you have to improve on. So if you're only getting 50 on the multiple choice, then that tells you that you really have to work on multiple choice questions. If you're you know, getting a 300 or 350 on the written portion, that tells you that writing is your strength. And I like to point this out to people because oftentimes people will say, oh, I really struggle with multiple choice. But when we look at the numbers, they oftentimes struggle just as much, if not more, with a written portion. So don't just assume you struggle with one area. The advantage of having a score report like this is you can actually look and see where you're struggling. For a converted multiple choice score, you want about a 280 as your converted multiple choice and about a 280 um, as your written score. And they'll basically convert these numbers. It doesn't matter if you understand how the scale works or not. Um, it changes. And so that's basically what you need to know about that. And overall, what you really want to pay attention to next after looking at your raw multiple choice and raw written score is you want to look at your total scale score. A 560 is considered passing, so you want to see how close you were to that 560 mark. Obviously, the farther you are away from it, the more work you have to do to pass. If you're super close to 560, good for you. Um, it doesn't, you might not have to put in that much effort and you can still pass. What I recommend you do though is even if you're very close to that 560 mark, I would pretend that you're not. Pretend that you need to improve your score 50 points next time. Because if you work on improving your score significantly, then chances are you will pass even if you fall, uh, fall short of your goal of getting like a 650 or something. You'll still pass the bar exam as long as you get above that 560. So I always recommend taking it very seriously when you fail and don't just say, oh, I failed by a couple points, you know, I don't have to do that much work because it, then you might find yourself in the same position again. And we've had students who have failed the bar exam, you know, they come to us on their seventh time taking it, and they've been within five points of passing every single bar exam. And if they would have just changed their approach and invested more time and resources and energy the first time, they wouldn't have had to go through it seven times um, before they finally changed their approach. So keep that in mind. The goal here of looking at your score report is to figure out where you need to improve and also realize what your strengths are because you can capitalize on those strengths while at the same time improving your weaknesses and then hopefully getting a 560 on the next baby bar exam that you take. And if you're looking for extra resources, we have a lot of them. I'm not even going to go through them all here, but we have private tutoring, baby bar one sheets, all kinds of things that can help you uh, pass the bar exam. So hopefully this was helpful in dissecting your baby bar exam score report.